We're going to go over a spy server. This is a, a very easy uh, server to get up and running. I was actually surprised by uh, the quality and how easy this was to get running, but I do have the files included in Dragon OS uh, in the latest version, the public R1, and they're located in the user source spy server directory. See, it's already, the source is here, it's already unzipped. I'm going to open up another window just to see my IP address here for a second. So all we need to do is go in here and edit the spyserver.config file because I want to be able to connect to this server from another machine. You can see I've already put my the bind host, uh, the IP address, everything else I've left as default. You can read through here. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you don't want to list it in the AirSpy directory, you can change that. Uh, you can specify uh, specific devices if you want. I just left it at auto. I do have the RTL SDR plugged in. You can change sample rate, um, bandwidth. There's a lot of different things in here that you can change. I'm just going to leave everything else at uh, its default. And then I'm going to go ahead and spin up the spy server with the RTL SDR plugged in. I'll come over here to my Windows uh, virtual machine. Let's see, make sure, okay, should be able to see most of that. I'll download the latest uh, Windows SDR software from airspy.com. You can save it wherever you'd like. Uh, I will just save it to the desktop. I've already went through and um, tested this uh, Tested this out. I'm looking here. Okay, well, in my instance here, it's wanting to save it in the SDR Sharp folder that I've already uh, unzipped. You can see it's here. We can go through. You would uh, extract all. You'd end up with a folder SDR Sharp x86. I come down. I find my SDR Sharp. I go ahead and open this up. Give it a second. I come over here. I change the drop down to the spy server network. Now I'll come in here. I'll change my IP address to the IP address I set in the config file of the server. I connect and right off the bat. I mean, it's, I, I'm, I'm amazed at how good the quality is. Um, I just want to show you, you can get this up and running really quick with, with uh, Dragon OS or really any uh, Linux distro for, for that matter. It was very, very simple. Uh, but what I want to try is uh, after RTLSDR.com uh, put one of my videos on their site, which was the access and RTL T, uh, TCP over Tor, um, the quality wasn't that great. It's was just a lot of information obviously being passed over. And so the suggestion was made to maybe try uh, the spy server over Tor. So I'll try and run through that real quick here. Let's hop back over to the uh, Linux machine here. So the Dragon OS. So uh, and normally I like to show everything from the beginning, but uh, I'll run through. I What you will need is uh, sudo app uh, install tour and ssh, because I don't install either one of those by default in Dragon OS. So I would, uh, you'd run through, you install it, set up your ssh, and it would set up tour. Now like in the other video, um, slightly different since we're not running it on OpenWRT, but uh, I'd come through here, sudo, I'd have a look at the torsocks.com file. I'd come down, and all I did was uncomment the allow outbound local host, sorry, and the allow inbound. So I'd uncomment that, 
and then I would have a look at the in the Etsy tour tour RC file. Again, very similar to OpenWRT, uh, even less uh, work that you have to do here. I come down, I uncommented the run as daemon one, I uncommented and left a default the var lib tour data directory, came down a little bit more, uncommented the hidden service directory and hidden service port, didn't change a thing other than uncomment, save the file, exited, and restarted uh, tour, then change uh, temporarily to root, and I had a look in the var lib tour. I can see that uh, files are starting to generate. It created the other hidden service directory. I now have my private key and the host name, which if I catted that out, it would be my dot onion address. Okay, so that's running. We have our spy server running, but we're gonna stop that for a second. We're gonna take the spy server config. Let's change this back to 127.0.0.1. Save that. Let's start the spy server back up. Okay, so it's listening on 127.0.0.1. Mind you, might take a second for the tour service to get all synced up. You have SSH now, so obviously this is not very secure at all because now your SSH hidden uh, service is exposed to tour. You got username and password by default. Probably not a good thing, but this is just temporary. Uh, I don't even mind. I don't think there's anything wrong showing the... Uh, onion address because I'm going to delete this and it'll be different anyway. So that's running. So now let's come back over here. We need two things. Uh, we'll go to putty. We need to pull down, you can just pull down the uh, portable um, or standalone binary here. I pulled down the 64-bit one. I have it sitting on my desktop. I then went over to the tourproject.org. You click download tour browser. Come down here to download source, tour source code. Come down again, Windows Expert Bundle. I downloaded that to the desktop and unzipped it right here. You can see it, tour win32. Okay, so we got all that. We've got our SDR uh, sharp package as well. So let's come in here, open up the tour folder that you downloaded and extracted. Open up Tor. Come down here. It's going to start just Tor running in Windows. Okay, it's going to sync with the network. We got to give it a little while. Now we'll come over here to Putty, and I'll walk through this. But so you'll put your Onion address, port 22. You need to come down to Proxy. I did SOX5, localhost, port 9050, which right here you can see how that's going to work. And then under SSH tunnel, uh, yeah, I'll verify, but I, I checked both, both these boxes. I came down, I added source port of 555, a destination 127.0.0.1. Five 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 five. Clicked Add. It put it up here. Okay. So now what should be happening is I'm proxying using the tour that's here to get onto the to essentially torify uh, like we did on Linux, uh, Putty and my SSH connection, and then the port five 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 here on this machine will go over to the remote machine five 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 which should uh, give us access to our SD, yeah, our, uh, or, sorry, spy server over on the remote machine. Um, granted, I could just as easily um, put the remote machine on a cellular backhaul to, to show this even better, but 
for the purposes of, of this video, again, I have it all on the same network, but we're still going through the Tor network. So anyways, let's open this up. It should be synced by now. Sometimes it uh, it takes a while, but okay. So now I am logging into the Dragon OS on the remote end. I'll leave this running. Uh, we'll come here to our SDR Sharp program, and we'll back this out, and we'll change it to 127.0.0.1, and Okay, we'll give it a second. It's a little slow at first. You can see the bandwidth here that we're going over tour. But what I did notice is after it settled down, it started to clear up. So now I don't know how stable that would be long term because it looks like it's uh, already dropped off there's probably still going to be delays uh, let's take a look at the remote machine yeah wow okay so two things there sdr spy server uh with or without tour and how to get it set up uh on uh, windows and then talking to your dragon os okay